Hey, hey everybody, how's it going? Let's play some more Disco Elysium, shall we? But before that, uh... You know, last time... Last time I talked about... Well... I didn't just talk about it, I actually did it. I tried to... Voice... Our... Friend... Uh, Ali here... A little bit differently than I usually do, right? Um, I want to distinguish his voice from mine in some way. Well, I listened to that and I gotta say, I sort of cringed and uh, decided that uh, it wasn't working. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> All right, despite my good intentions there, it didn't work. Um, I did indeed sort of sound constipated. Um, Let's uh, write it off as uh, Aries' case of the shivers somehow, okay? Um, but uh, but seriously, um, yeah, I'm gonna be dropping that. However, however, I'm not going to give up entirely. This is still going to be an experimental stream in a certain way. So, you know. Um, instead of trying to change the, you know, change my voice, which didn't work, by the way, but, and it's, and it's difficult, it really is, it's not easy to do so, um, at a whim like that, um, I decided, still, that there needs to be contrast, and so I think it, uh, this goes for uh, changing tactics, huh? So, uh, speak a little bit differently whenever our friend Ari speaks here. How about that, huh? So yeah, um, we'll be doing a bit of that. Uh, we'll just have to see. Again, uh, completely experimental. So, yeah. But yeah, let's get on with the investigation. We really need to visit several people. There's a whole bunch of uh, new faces over that, the mess hall. Um, us, we... Probably have to say hello to Lena in all honesty. Uh, hello there, Lena. Just a moment. She's agitated, judging from the way she keeps pulling at the frayed edge of her blanket. And there's no public phones nearby? The closest phone booth is down the coast. Sorry for the inconvenience, ma'am. That is true. The only phone I've seen was uh, at the Union. At the Union building. Uh, yeah. It's fine, I understand. Thank you anyway. I'm glad to see you again, dear. Yes, yeah, a good day, madame. Uh, everything all right? Oh, please don't trouble yourself about me, sweetie. I was just hoping to make a call, but the Whirling's phone line isn't working. The Union office probably has a phone, but I can't really get there. Or to the phone booth down the coast. And Gary's phone is dead too. Uh, wait, uh, what's wrong with the phone line? The manager was vague about it. Why would he be vague about phone problems? This is something to look into later. Ask God, maybe. We always have to look into everything, huh? But, uh, it's true, right? Uh, why is he vague about it? All right. Uh, why did you need to use the phone uh, anyway? To let the young woman who's house-sitting for us know that we may be delayed. Morel, my husband, and our friend Gary were supposed to get back by Monday night, but they're still missing and I haven't heard from them. I was also hoping she'd heard from Morel. Hmm. Okay, I'll bite. Uh, has your uh, husband uh, gone uh, missing before? That's just it. This isn't like him at all. He always plans his expeditions so carefully. A cold breeze hisses through dense thickets of reeds. Something sweet in it, somnolent. A damp chill goes down your spine. When you look around, you're still in the whirling in rags. Hmm. Hmm, yeah, what a feeling. But you have more important things to worry about. 
No, I mean, after crashing into her like that, I think we ought to help the old lady here, but, um... Um... Yeah... Well, due to the incident yesterday, I uh, really feel inclined to be helping you, madame. Uh, what is this uh, expedition your husband was on? Just some field work, sweetie. Morel is a highly trained scientist. He and his assistant Gary are studying an extremely rare species of insect. But they should have returned by now. They were just going down the coast across the water lock to set a few traps. He said they'd be back on Monday. What could be keeping them? Ah, that's easy to answer, actually, because the problem is in the canal. Um, I guess there being something stuck in the canal, right? The sign blocks the canal right now, at the moment. And could it be that one of those people... Oh no, wait, the, the, the guy with the salami, right? He was... First of all, he looked nothing like a scientist. And number two, he was already on this side. So if, it, if he had anything to do with Lena, he probably could have um, come back to this... Uh, came back to her and told her what happened, right? The water lock yeah, exactly. that was broken. Could this be it? Uh, the water lock to the other side of the coast is uh, broken. They're, they're probably just uh, stuck with a. Oh my! What happened to the water lock? Um, to be honest, I, I really don't know. Well, oh. whatever the cause, I'm thankful to both of you. You've spared me another sleepless night. To be honest, I have no idea, but apparently it's some technical problem, huh? Okay. Let's just call it a technical problem, yes. You're welcome, ma'am. I hate to ask, but if your investigation takes you to the other side of the coast, please do keep an eye out for my husband. Yeah, no, no worries about that. This will surely lead to a cryptozoological mystery with that extremely rare insect. And if you see him, let him know Lena is waiting for him here at the Whirling. He gets so tangled up in his work that he may not know the water lock's been repaired. And it's cold out there. Uh, Madame, I assure you, if I see him, I'll let him know you're here uh, when or if I get there. Oh, you're such a dear. Thank you, sweetie. But just so that uh, I know who to look for, um, tell me more about uh, Morel. Uh, looks, uh, character, your relationship. Oh, dear. I'm not sure where to begin. Um, uh, what does your husband look like? Hmm. Well... His expression is slightly grumpy, but his eyes are always bright and curious, like a small boy's. And his palms are quite coarse from all the field work, but he's quite gentle. Mm. Uh, le let's uh, try again. If I were trying to meet him on the street, uh, what would I look for? Oh, well, he's a bit shorter than you, but with a larger frame, and he has longish white hair, usually a bit uncombed, you might say wild even. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's better. A better description. The lieutenant pulls out his notebook and begins jotting down the woman's description. Typical Kim. Probably a smart idea. We should probably be doing the same. Not gonna lie. One other thing, he'll likely have all kinds of field gear on him, even if he's not out in the reeds, you know, just in case. 
And uh, how long have you been uh, married? We'll be celebrating our 16th anniversary this autumn. Not the most numerically satisfying anniversary, but I like the less obvious milestones even more somehow. Mm -hmm. So, 16 years, okay. I think this is irrelevant, really, uh, how the two met. Um, yeah, I think I have all the information I need. Uh, let's move on. I hope I've been useful. Uh, you have been, don't you worry. Um, well, perhaps this can offer some clues where to look for him, maybe? Possibly? Um... Do we feel like listening about rare insects right now? <laughs> I don't think so, but... Hey, it's still information, so... Uh, tell me more about this uh, rare insect your husband is is looking for. I am... Um, uh, what can I say? I'm a curious man. Oh, sweetie, it's fascinating. But I shouldn't bore you with entomological minutiae. Uh. The lieutenant gives you a sideways glance. <laughs> Somehow I knew it. I knew it. Okay. Um... Actually, you're right. Uh, I don't want to have time for insects, insect facts uh, right now. Um, let's talk about something else. Uh, of course, dear. Yeah. Well, I think that's all for now, madame. If I see your husband, I'll make sure to let him know uh, that you're worried about him. All right, so we shouldn't forget about the power move, shall, shall we? Um, Kim suggested as much. Although you said it's our call, so, um, hey, I guess we'll ignore these people for now. Yeah, we have other things to take care of. All around you, rain falls on the great city of Rivershaw. Rain drips from the eaves and floods the gutters washing the filth away. The spring thaw must be here. The snow is melting. What am I doing? Looking up at the sky, cold water dripping from your hair. What do I see? Grey sky like great battleships, clouds colliding with one another. Rain falls down on the world. How does it feel? Humid. Your coat shields you from the rain, while the city shivers around you. <laughs> uh, what is in the west? Sheets of rain over the water. A flight of stairs leading into the ocean. Wave after wave washing the coast of Martinez. With its motorboats and gently swaying reeds. The ruins of a half-sunken sea fort crumble on an inlet. Beyond the Bay of Revachol, ghosts rise into the sky. Hmm. And uh, who are you, ghosts? The skyscrapers of La Delta, the financial district. Faint golden light seeps from the office windows. Will you ever go there? Oh no, you tell me. Will I? No. You are just one of the hundreds of thousands who watch them rise across the bay from Martinez every day. Uh, what is down the shore? Urban coastline, rain dripping off etonite covered roofs, cinder blocks left over from half finished construction, a defunct research and development building once seized by revolutionaries. An old wooden church stands on stilts above the water. Yeah, I remember the man with the salami kind of described something similar, especially the church. 
I think there's something peculiar about the church. Um, yeah. And beyond that? Coal City, end of all lines. Mm-hmm. Your hair is an oily mess flecked with ash from neighboring coal plants. Smokestacks rise somewhere in the distance. Motherfucker. This rain will not let up anytime soon. At least we are dressed for it. Let's keep moving. Alright, so, uh, the plan. The plan is to actually talk to Plessance about... about the photo. Yeah, so for some reason I think that Plessance might have interesting ideas regarding the the meaning of the tattoos uh, on the corpse. So, yeah, so let's ask her, actually. And see if that's indeed true. Hello there, Blessance. How are you doing today? Hello again, esteemed officer, and welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Wait, there's no option. I thought that'd be an option to frickin' ask if she could help uh, with any sort of information because, quite frankly, she seems to be quite into the... I would say they're cult in some way. Um, I would imagine. Just call it just a hunch for now, but... Hmm. Well... Uh, no, I didn't ask uh, yes yesterday, but who's the little girl uh, standing outside? Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? Jeez. Uh, yes, uh, of course. Wonderful! Did you talk to her? Uh, yes, for, for a little bit. Great! On a scale of 1 to 10, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? Well, I'm not necessarily grading a human being. I mean, I'm, I'm grading her performance. Uh, but to be honest, yes, this is a bit strange. Uh, I'm not going to grade a human being. I, I don't do that. Come now. It's not personal. It's about proper sales practices and market research. I expect an answer. Okay, would you, happy, would you be happy with uh, Ten? She's certainly very polite and helpful. My precious... Her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. Should we speak our opinion on this? I mean, it is quite strange, I, I gotta say. I will be honest, uh, the way you're handling her strikes me as uh, wrong. Mind you're in business, sir. In our society, oh, it's like that, people huh? don't get to tell each other how to raise their children. It's none of your or anyone's business. Okay, okay, I'm not here to argue. Let's uh, change the subject. The woman before you scans the store, her shoulders rigid and tense. Every now and then, she nudges her glasses. All right, so uh, nothing about the photo, nothing at all. We can't ask anything here. All right, well, uh, I guess uh, goodbye for now. Um, perhaps we need to look into books. 
anything on religion, perhaps. There's also this curtain. Say, Kilma, would you, wouldn't you agree that that uh, <laughs> curtain is a little bit suspicious, huh? Where was religion again? I remember uh, freaking checking this place out and I'm not so sure where it could be. Ah, I missed this the first time. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachol, and a map of Martinez. Hmm. Which map interests us the most? Um, but I gotta say, I was confident that Plaisance would have s some sort of information, but apparently... She, perhaps she's not inclined to be discussing anything like this. So... <laughs> like, meaning of, of tattoos on, on corpses. Jeez. But okay, um... Alright, let's first look at the map of Martinez. It's not really a map. It's a tourist thing. A picture postcard with buildings on it, drawn from an isometric perspective. A date in the upper right corner says 48. Aha, uh -huh, so 48. The year is 51 though. Okay, so it's not fresh. Okay. Still, it's detailed. Could be pretty useful for scouting ahead. You see the jagged boxes of an industrial harbour. Even the whirling in rags there. And the map uh, of Ravashol? The north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta of a river. It is the river Esperance. Countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and construction. Mm -hmm. Interesting. To the east, rolling hillsides, Le Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint Baptiste, swallowed up into the mega city. They sound rich to you. This is Rivershall East. And uh, west of the river? Hudon. It's somewhere to live. Not bad. Then there's Jamrock. It's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. Then Forberg. It's almost as bad and much larger. Then Coal City. It's the worst. Hmm. Didn't Kim claim the RCM has control over Jamrock and Farborg? Uh, but it's still bad there. <laughs> you know that? Uh, it's not very flattering now, is it? Um, but, okay, so I know Avi is from Jamrock. I suspect uh, uh, I, uh, our friend um, Kim is from Farborg. At least he, his precinct is there. And I assume my precinct is in Jamrock. Okay, and Martinez? It's so small you can't even see it on the map. No, wait. There it is. North of Jamrock. The strip of coast next to the Greater Rivershall Industrial Harbour. It looks downright despondent. It's almost Coal City, to be honest. No. Coal City is worse. A charred limb. Rain falls on its slick black streets. And then there's the burnt out quarter in the heart of Jamrock. Is it cold in this bookstore? Or is it just you? Mm -hmm. Could this be a case we were... Hopefully investigating back in Jamrock. Perhaps it has something to do with our depression. I get this old feeling that I somehow know this case, but I don't know. Maybe this happened a hundred years ago, I don't know, but I don't know. Call it a shiver. No, this is somewhere to be. This is all you have. 
but it's still something. Streets and sodium lights, the sky, the world, you're still alive. Mm. And uh, what's this in Cylinder? This large map displays archipelagos. You see a constellation of small dots on the light blue emptiness of the Insulindic Ocean. The largest in the northeast is La Caillou. You are here. Another far away in the southwest, Seminese Islands, Ile de Fantôme. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Ozon, Laurentide, Fas Alamir, Archipelagos, North Arcade Islands. All just specks of dust on the vastness of the Insulindic. On the edges of the map, the color fades into a blur of dotted lines, black and white. Hmm. Interesting. So I imagine this is the map of the world, I suppose. Yeah, and... Or maybe the continent? Anyway, never mind. So, okay. Whole bunch of stuff. In there. Okay, so it gets bigger and bigger. And then focuses on this one area called Martinez. Okay. I mean, like, the sequence of maps is what I'm thinking about right now. Okay. In the northeast, a dust mite stands on the north coast of Caillou in a bookstore. It's you. Radiating outwards from you, the Suzerain River Shore. With a radius of 80 kilometers, still, the crown jewel of this Isola would be barely visible. Let's look at the edges. The ocean breaks apart into a tangle of cosines and azimuths, all pointing into pale nothingness. Windy is the north azimuth. Grad is the northeast azimuth. Samara is the east azimuth. Seo is the west azimuth. Isolas, they're called. Okay. Connections to other worlds. Words past the Insulindian unknown to you. You only know you've never been there. Indeed, yes, that's you all I know. You little idea what they are. Distant stars, gods, but looking at them makes you feel almost non-existent. Whatever they are, the Isolas are immeasurably large compared to you and very, very far away. Hmm. Perhaps they are gods. Gods of distance and outer dust. Say, Stokeep, can I buy these maps? I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore. And besides, you could scarcely afford them. Uh, how would she know? They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. You seem to underestimate my resources, but sure, okay. Yes, yes. Are you interested or not? Uh, I want to buy the uh, map of Martinez. Always good to be informed of your surroundings. Indeed, indeed. Alright, anything on... All right, let's look at the picture again. So, a worn and torn map of Martinez area, dating from 48. A title on the top reads, Bienvenue à Revachol. It's a bit out of date as it was originally created by a design studio in a failed attempt to spruce up Martinez and turn it into a fancy tourist location. Yeah, that worked out. I guess it was a project back in 48 and it's 51. That's three years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is what I thought Plaisance would have some sort of input on. But apparently she's not the one <laughs> to be asking these questions. Um, yeah, okay, so let's interact with the map. The worn map features the patchwork grid of the streets of Martinez with directions to appropriately touristy locations. 
Year 48 resides on the upper right corner. Let's trace a path through the grid. Your finger moves through the various streets, across Rue de Songyis Lane and Rue Sansipa, over Saint Brun and Martinez North. Martinez North. Finally, coming to a halt on the spot where you are currently standing, although the map gives no such indication itself. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, I need a book on something like astrology, I think. Uh, not necessarily astrology. Um, perhaps something on religion. Maybe here? This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Paranatural, There's okay. also a wide range of paranatural literature. Uh, Stokeep, what are... what books are these? Hum, sir, please, no browsing in that shelf. That wisdom is not for free. I did not say anything about it being free, I just asked... What books... are they? Like opening a police store next door and stealing my customers? Oh no! Ma'am, I'm just sort of inclined to ask whether you're... Are you good? <laughs> of course, I just thought that, but I'm just saying. Are you good? What's good? But anyway... Gotta pay attention to that... Uh, to that curtain game. It's a little bit suspicious. I do not like the looks of it. Um, but right now we have other things to take care of, so... Uh, I guess we should take care of those first. Alright, uh, Madame Plaisance, I will be leaving. You have a good day now. So little girl, are you doing okay? Hello again, sir. Are you interested in a new and exciting book this time? So is it okay if I ask you some questions? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. Um... First of all, uh, what is your name? My name is Annette, sir. My mum. Her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside, minding the register, or organising the stock. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. Well, we know that her mother forces her to do this, but let's see what she says. And you're standing out here in the cold uh, because... I'm signalling that the store is open. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Mm. Or he did, though. Mm. Mm. Perhaps I should have a. Uh... Another word with the store owner. Maybe. Oh no, no sir. I'm happy to help mum by luring in customers. Besides, I have some hot juice in my vacuum bottle to keep warm. But say, uh, what is this uh, crime business? Crime fiction is about murders or burglaries or things like that. And the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime and catch the criminals. Okay, I I get it. Uh, crime murder gets uh, people going. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm and it's kind of like a puzzle too. You can guess who the criminal is or how the good guys are going to catch him. Well, uh, I'm a policeman myself, by the way. 
You don't look much like a policeman. Huh? Well, uh, what does a uh, gulp look like then? Didn't mean to offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. Again, this Dick Mullen. You know, it's not your body that's important in police work, um, anyway. Uh, it's your... Head, yes. No, your resilience. That too. No, your mind. Well, both actually, but if we have to choose uh, a quicksilver mind, this uh, Mullen guy looks like he needs four hours just to come up with a single idea. No, he's wicked smart in the stories. Sure, uh, when the author does all the thinking for him, uh, real policemen have to think and act on their own. Like you, sir, of course. He's just a fictional character. He's no match for you. There, I, I guess not. Maybe you can show me some real police work, sir. Like in the books. Okay, I'm going to deduce something now. The girl keeps her hands folded, hidden. Why is that? Hey, uh, why do you keep your hands folded? What do you mean, sir? <laughs> sort of true, but not really. Depends. Um... Uh, you can show them to me. She looks around anxiously. Her hands remain folded in front of her. She doesn't want to show them. The lieutenant stands by, looking at the two of you with little interest. It's okay. She brings out her reddened hands, her nails frayed, nearly chewed down to the flesh. Dang, bro. Uh, you bite your nails? And you knew this from me keeping my hands folded? You know, it's uh, super simple for a detective such as myself. Well, that proves nothing. Anyone could do an easy deduction like that. Uh, want more? Uh, bet I can uh, figure out why you bite your nails. I got a few reasons in mind. She nods, half provocative, half enthusiastic. Uh, put it that way, what the fuck? <laughs> You're uh, uptight because your mother and the uh, pressure she's putting on you. Maybe so, sir. Okay, I know it's a bad habit, and I shouldn't. Well, I hope this entertained you somehow. It was okay, sir. There's more that can be achieved here. Ask her to do the same. Uh, you... You think so? Uh, fine, do do better. <laughs> to do something about me. You're quite sober. The lieutenant does not flinch at the comment. He does not flinch even a single bit. He is intensely not flinching. 
it takes effort. Uh, wait, uh, how do you know I'm usually not? Because you usually aren't. <laughs> and I'm having a grand time. I sure hope you are, sir. There she stands, swaying on her feet, assaulted by the early spring breeze. She smiles at you. The whole situation suddenly feels familiar, somehow. Say, shouldn't you be at school or something? I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help mum keep this place running. Well, uh, school is stupid. You're lucky not to be there. Mum says it's necessary to do both because it builds character. Mum says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. There is stress and unease behind these words. She's reciting etiquette. Mm, how's the business going? Mum says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being cursed. Hmm. Behind her, the window has been boarded up. You sense the boards creaking, twisting for a second, and some kind of doubt in her tense shoulders. <laughs> this, what? Uh, <laughs> why would you say this? It's so oblivious. But anyway. Cursed. Uh, in what way? Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go... Bankrupt? Exactly. But we've been doing fine so far. Well, considering everything I've been feeling, this sounds uh, rather serious. I should probably look into this. Hmm. We can go into the bookstore and ask about the case, but I don't see much more to look into here. Yes. Please do also look at our wares inside. The postcards and board games are there, sir. Hmm. Yes, um, but um, e enough about the, the curse for now. Maybe I can tell you about some of our books instead. Hmm. Okay, uh, bye. S see you around, Annette. We didn't gather much from that. <laughs> I mean, other than, like, in terms of our case, I understand this is a side thing. Um, there's also that suspicious curtain that Plaisance just doesn't want us to look behind. We we really gotta look into that, Kim. Uh, later on, perhaps. Uh, right now, I think it is time that we. Now we go back and uh, talk to the workers. Oh, hello. You, you are the gardener, yes? Let me handle this. You seem a little different today. Less... Hospitable. True, eh? You are far from home, Lieutenant. This isn't a district known for its love of self-proclaimed militiamen. Mm. Uh, you're right, Lieutenant. She did seem friendlier sitting uh, on that corner. Not a muscle moves in her face. 
but her eyes trace yours, stern and perceptive. You are looking for Titus Hardy, who you think has information on a murder the RCM is investigating. You want to interview him. Perhaps. That's Titus. Talk to him, but know this. I'll be keeping an eye on you. No strong arming, nothing official. The district of Martinez does not recognize your authority to make arrests. It doesn't matter if you recognize our authority. We will make an arrest if we have to. She says nothing. Her glare speaks for her. Uh, why are you so aggressive? Aggressive? You make your living enforcing violence. These people are just dock workers. The way she says, just dock workers. Hmm. Hmm. So you were spying on us, and now you represent murder suspects. Just dock workers. Listen, you moral intern lackeys. You're a mob, enforcing the unlawful privatization of Revishal. Twenty fat men in the Occident are stealing it all, and you're their bodyguards. Fuck yeah. So ask what you came to ask, or get back to your commanders. Yeah, let's do that. Let's uh, ask those questions. Let's. What is uh, your role in, in all this? Obviously, I'm a lawyer. A legal counselor for the Dock Workers Union. I would urge you to consider what you say to my clients. Wow. She's also good at some, um, well, I would say subterfuge. Wow, I had no idea. I genuinely thought she was a regular, well, just a gardener sitting there, right? Hmm. She even had the ammonia for us yesterday. I should talk to Titus then. Oh boy. And I'm kind of already wishing I was outside. Hello, so you are Titus, I assume. This is where you say your bed. Detective. Well, his attitude is understandable. He's on the home turf, essentially. Um, we are not, that's the problem. Um. Hey, hey dipshit. You hard of hearing or something? The boss man's talking to you. Well, we need to talk about the man uh, hanged out back. Oh, this is about him. A real looker, that one. You sure took your time, huh? Waited for him to get real ripe and pretty for you. Oh, he was a real pretty boy. Hanging up there, letting out that pretty boy smell. I can't for the life of me understand why you did it. I mean, I would have just left him up there. 
You must really like cleaning up other people's shit. You might want to start asking your questions now. It's not going to get better than this. Hmm. Um, yeah, indeed. Let's scan the room. No, no, no. Eyes here. You got business with my boys. You got business with me. Yeah! You fuck with the Hardy boys, you fuck with Titus Hardy! Relax, Dennis. No one is fucking you yet. <laughs> yeah, Dennis, calm down. No one's fucking you, you stupid fuck. Let Dennis enjoy his fucking, man. We don't mind. Yeah, <laughs> you're not even being fucked, Dennis. Easy, fellas. We got company. Let's see what brings the cop around. Too late. You already scanned the room. You got a pretty good picture. I mean, for the most part, yeah. The, all the people involved in this picture, yes. Hmm. Yeah, got it. Good. You could take another look at the tracks in the yard on the crime scene. See if they fit this bunch. <sighs> probably do. It probably does. But let's ask something very blunt. I know it's not gonna go anywhere, but... Still. Uh, the man hanged in the backyard, uh, did you do it? The pretty boy. You guys really love talking about that pretty boy. Funny, but my partner and I have a serious matter to discuss with you. Why is there a container belt around the dead man's neck? Container belt? Like we use in the harbor? Yes, uh, why? Because we took it from the harbor where we work. Then we went out back and used it to hang him. As he speaks, his fists contract, going through the pulling motion again, savoring it. Is that a confession? We did this. Together. All of us. Until he was dead. That's why there's a container belt around his neck. There's a catch hidden somewhere. He didn't confess so that you could take them all away. It's too simple. But, uh, there's a catch. There is no catch. These seven honest men have all equally come forth to tell you what happened, so that you don't waste any more of your time. Hmm. So you murdered him just like that? No remorse? How many people have you sent to the Shays? Ever felt remorse for them? Or send them to reunion to rot? For 20 years? For life? What we do is different. We enforce the law. You just kill people like it's nothing. But you see, a law, lawman, is something people agree upon. And here in Martinez, we agreed that this man had to die. Hmm. So who called the shots that night? Are you deaf? There will be no singling anyone out. You can't arrest a Hardy boy, without arresting all Hardy boys. Do you think you could do that? 
Do you think you could arrest them all? Well, by the looks of it, it's certainly Titus, but... <clears throat> But we could call out the weakest link, uh, I guess. Oh well. Unless we mean Titus, he certainly doesn't seem like the weakest link, but... I don't have to. One of them was uh, complicit than others. That's for the courts in Le Jardin to decide. Not for the officer making an arrest. Which we all know you won't be. What you can do right now is go back to your station and write a report. No, no. We'll stay here and discuss what happened that night. So, uh, when did this hanging incident occur? You don't have to keep answering his questions. I know, Lizzie. Relax. We killed him last Sunday night. Seemed like a good way to end the week. Understood. Uh, next question. Why not? Yep, my ear off. I got nothing to hide. So, uh, why did you kill him? Why? Because he was worthless mercenary scum. And he stepped out of line in my town. So he was a mercenary? That's, that's it? And he stepped out of line. What kind of mercenary? The kind that shows up when you start a strike. The experienced kind, too. Had Kohoi and Semenin written all over him. ex oranese special forces. Mm -hmm. A live grenade! Right here, in our bar! I can't prove it. But I know he was sent by the Wild Pines. They hire merc shit like that. Story of every strike from here to Samara. Uh, right, but what did he actually do wrong? Wrong? He harassed women, raped one, harassed workers, threatened to kill some as a warning. There's a slight unease in him, suddenly. He regrets mentioning the rape. To kill us all, if we don't open the gates, if we don't let the scabs in, if we don't bend over. And that was before he started coming here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said it was his favorite joint now. Started to come in here every night. Drinking, grabbing girls, grab one of ours mid-karaoke, right there on the stage. He grabbed someone? Yeah. This girl's on the mic, a beautiful girl, young. Gets into the second verse of Lover Lake, the fucker grabs her legs, starts screaming. Show me your cunt! Why don't you show me your cunt? Then, he gets knocked on the head with a wine bottle, doesn't even fall down. Was this the same uh, girl who was sexually assaulted? Raped, you said? Aren't you fucking listening? My man is talking to you. He took care of it. They got the girl out before anything else could happen. Yeah, me and Eugene got her out. Aren't you fucking listening? All right, but who did he ra rape then? This is a very serious uh, allegation. No, you're not getting the name. That's a Martinez matter. And I'm not discussing it with you clowns. Okay, um, how, how did you kill him? We hanged him up by his neck until he got real still. Wasn't that obvious, copper? You know, after having sobered up some more, right? What started bothering me is that 
There were no claw marks on his neck, right? He wasn't and um what's that? Um I guess signs of resistance of some kind, like and it doesn't seem like he was tied up, right? So maybe I was wrong in my conclusion that that's the cause of death. Maybe something else caused it. So I'm not so sure that uh, it was the hanging that did it. Didn't they teach you anything at the cop school, idiot? Can you give us a few more details? Did you muffle him? We haven't heard any reports of screams. Mm -hmm. Titus, you don't have to clarify anything. We overpowered him, dragged his unconscious body to the tree, put a noose around his neck, and hanged him till he was dead and steady. Hmm. But from what I remember, right, in the report, like when we looked at the body, the field autopsy, Kim specifically said that the head injuries were caused by the stones thrown by Kuno, right? They were caused post-mortem, they weren't caused... Um, ...whilst he was alive, right? So, I imagine if he was unconscious, he probably would have had to suffer a blow to the head. Right? Most likely, right? But that didn't happen, did it? Then we left him for seagulls, maggots, and you fucks. Yeah, they're, they're not. They're definitely not right. And uh, wasn't he trained killer from uh, or any special forces? If yes, then how did you manage to overpower him? With numbers, asshole. How do you think? You're right, Lizzie. I've done enough explaining here. No, he hasn't. Not yet. Things uh, aren't quite right here, are they? Titus is solid as a rock, and so are a few others. But. Uh, who's cracking under pressure? <laughs> mm-hmm. Right, I suppose this is the only chance we get because I doubt he'll ever be alone without these fellas, right? At least in our vicinity. Might be inside the harbor or whatever, but we don't have access to the harbor exactly. We just have access to the administrative parts. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter where this overpowering happened, uh, it probably happens uh, at the, like, somewhere nearby. Um... Hey, you! Uh, you have, uh, trouble breathing over there? No! Of course he's having trouble breathing! Just look at how fucking fat he is! <laughs> Fuck off, Shanky. Angus is a powerful guy. All muscle. Keep your eye on this powerful guy. Sooner or later, he's going to break like a piece of twig. Hmm. Okay, and uh, where did this overpowering happen? Weren't you fucking listening? The fucker came to our bar. It happened right here. There's something uh, you're not telling me. And fuck you, too, copper. Picking on Angus like this. We're done with this schoolyard shit. And just so you know, he doesn't have trouble breathing. This one is a stone wall. You won't get more out of them about the night of the murder. Not yet. Hmm. Right, right. Like what, copper? So
so uh, what are we going to do now? Nothing. Your investigation here is done. Leave Martinez, go back to your stations where you belong. I think we're going to stick around, thanks. Some things don't add up here, Titus. I've done this job for long enough to know that people don't just confess to first-degree murder. Even if it is a group responsibility, we're going to look into this. Good luck with that. You've heard everything a rent-a-cop is gonna hear from us, real law officials. You're lucky you didn't get a beaten. Forget about their games. You've mapped out the characters. Reading the footprints in the yard should be easier now. Well, uh, I guess it's time we take off. Wow. Okay. That's some new info. A whole bunch of new info. I gotta say. Um, of course, of course, they they weren't exactly too open about it, right? Like, I mean, yeah, they they essentially confessed the murder, but it, it like Kim said, it's also strange, right? Um, do we have more skill points? We do. We actually have a lot of skill points. Again, well, two, but still. Um, I wanted to invest into something. Uh, earlier, and I forgot what. Authority, I always wanted a bit more authority for this guy. Endurance as well. Actually, endurance, yes. Um, probably authority along the way. How about that? Yeah. Let's level these up. And next time, I think we need to focus on upgrading something further. Yeah, that would actually work. One of these will have to be upgraded some more. So yeah, we'll work with that. Um, yeah. Alright, so... The tracks, right? The, the, the boot prints. <laughs> Before we... I guess we embarrassed ourselves by... Not being able to look at them properly, but now the kids are still here though. This this is odd. There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from six to twelve pairs have walked here. Hmm. All right, uh, let's get an exact count here. Well, wow. still not doing it. You're bad at this. Why is this so complicated? I keep failing. Maybe you keep failing because you suck. Hmm. Wow, just when I upgraded my stuff. Ah, really? Yo, really? When? Just when I freaking. It was a high chance, too. It was 72%. That's not a low chance at all. Um, how much. How many points do I need? Oh boy, I need a lot of points. <laughs> my next point. I shouldn't have used it on authority, I guess. But how was I supposed to know that visual calculus was going to fail like that, right? With such a high chance, too. 72%. Oh, man. Um, what should we do now? Oh, these people are still here. Interesting. Actually, perhaps we should uh, talk to 
police again. In the morning light, the white on blue police livery on the motor carriage cannot but catch your eye. Wait, why am I even thinking about this? Wasn't I supposed to radio something in? Do something important? Yes. Something murder related? There's always something important. Doesn't mean you can't take a moment to admire this piece of machinery. Mm, true. Even at a standstill, the unibody Caprice Kanema looks sleek and dynamic. The cabin is tilted frontward to give it a more aggressive, hunched look. Someone has waxed it recently. I gotta say, that machine really puts uh, loco back in locomotion. Uh, very cool. Mm -hmm. You want to take a closer look? A fine machine. Yes, an extraordinary machine. It's nice and all, but why so modest? Put some zing into it. Flare it up. Slam it down. It's a bit girly right now. Fit it with some proper off-road components. Hmm. Well, it wouldn't look so sleek now, would it? <laughs> Make it more imposing? Hmm. But you know what? I was thinking, you need to slam it, Kim. Make it uh, more imposing. Sorry, I'm not following you. Lingo it up. You know, uh, drop the right 200 mil, get the gamble to frosty, frosty minuses. No, that's porno tuning. Use bigger. Words. It needs a massive air kit and gargantuan roof mounted porno. That's short for pornography. P pornography is something di completely different, Kim. That's a negative on the porno. Thank you, though. <laughs> But do say, what's it uh, packing there? 130. I reckon that's a 7 litre V12 there. Ooh, wow. Uh, that's uh, what? Uh, a 7 litre V12? 7.2. Supercharged. Do. Nice though, nice, I gotta say, wow. Okay, uh, let's move on. Alright, I, su I suppose I should uh, give at least another call about that armor. Was it? Wait. Did we... Oh yeah, that was yesterday, right? Uh, when we freaking... Called it in, yes, so I think we can give a, at least another call now. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone. This is Precinct 57, how may I assist you? Uh, hello Elise, uh, I was wondering, have you heard back from the ICP about the serial number? Yes, the armor was produced by Fairweather in their facilities in Betancourt, sur la clé in 42. And 42. It was part of a special order for Corps de Pharmacy, a security firm contracted to protect the interest of Orani pharmaceutical companies in the Seminine conflict. So, it seems the armor went to Seminine. That's where the paper trail ends, though. Even the firm has proven difficult to track. Corps de Pharmacy has been renamed several times over in the years since the armor was issued. 
I'm guessing one of its names is uh, Krenel? Yes. That is the most recent name the ICP has been able to connect to the CDP. And the one before it was Downwell. I also have one called Sediment, but I think that might be a different contractor. No, they work called Sediment. And some other sensor, it seems. All that during the last nine years. Armor like this isn't mass-produced. It would have probably been fitted. Perhaps there's a record of who signed for this particular suit of armor. Mm, a suit of armor like this would have been customized to fit the wearer. Uh, there must be a record of the person to whom it was issued. Yes, but the ICP tends to be reluctant to sell private sector records. I could try to talk them into it, though. Oh, it would be splendid, yes. This is a fun challenge for her an opportunity to contribute beyond doing her job by rote. She'll gladly put in the extra effort for Team RCM. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, officer. I really appreciate your efforts in this case. Glad to help. Call back tomorrow. Hopefully I'll have more for you then. Okay, thank you, Alice. Goodbye. 57th, over and out. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers. Mm. Ar hmm. Interesting, yeah? Are we doing that now? Oh, okay. I think later on. Yeah, she said tomorrow. She said tomorrow. Um, smoke on the balcony. That's another... Um, another lead. Apparently... Uh, some muscle-bound guy uh, talked to him. Pretending to be a cop, I think. Yeah, interesting. We do need those experience points for the visual calculus, so... Oh boy. What should we be doing here? I mean, no, actually we can complete some tasks. Um, wait, let's pay closer attention to what we need to do. Uh, we asked Kuno, yes. We actually asked him, no? We asked him already. Prove our authority to Titus? You see that happening? Ellie, you see that happening? I mean... We did increase authority, but I don't know. They did seem like tough cookies in that sense. I mean, they de de they definitely have strength in numbers. That's that's a big part of it. All these tasks, and uh, I guess we can't complete that many yet. Perhaps we should uh, take a seat. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. <laughs> hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. Okay, good point. Hmm. Okay, let's see what's... First of all, let's see what's happening over there.
Yeah, let's check this out. Let's check out the protest, the strike, I mean, um... What's going on there? What's new? You know? The woman is still here? I mean, of course she is. The jam is still... A jam. These people are still here as well. Mm. Just taking a look, really. And we do need to <laughs> keep an eye out <laughs> for bottles, because we do need to somehow manage to collect 20 real by the end of the day so Radio City. Hmm. Interesting book, huh? <laughs> Is that a loose uh, Radio City you're reading? Yes, a sci-fi. Um, who are you? Me? No one. I'm just a working class woman. That's it? She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. Mm. Well, she's obviously reading. Okay. Well, have a good day. This was a tremendously useful interlude. I mean, the person's busy. Yeah, I wonder where we should go next. Uh, shall we talk to Joyce? About about what then? Like, what's there to report? What's there to talk about? Is Cindy still up there? Cindy is still up there. <laughs> Not that I particularly want to talk to her. This is something new, apparently. What is this? We didn't notice this yesterday. Hmm. Say, Kim, what if we... Try something we haven't tried so far? How about we... Try and uh, pry this open, but apparently it can't be. Okay. Okay. I see your point. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Do we go back to the harbor? Or do we just stay here? Oh, it's open. Look at that, it's open. It's open. Hmm. No, I was just curious whether it was open or not. And it is. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, a bit problematic. The fact that we used up our skill points into 
other things because I didn't know that. I mean, what's this? Oh, just like that. Look at that. Oh, don't mind if I do some magnesium randomly. We already talked to Kuno. can ask uh, Gart about the phone, about why it's not working. That's somewhat connected to the case, right? Somebody phoned in the, the, the body, reported the body, after three days though, but still, somebody did. It's the man in the... what appears to be a uniform? Looks like a uniform of some kind. So yeah, we'll ask God about the freaking phone. But what's new in the kitchen? I saw lemon slice that thinly somewhere on social media. Yeah. How do people slice uh, anything like that? But anyway. Hello there, gods. Can I help you? Mm, nothing I can ask about. Uh, the phone? I guess you don't want to talk about the phone, huh? Okay, uh, I guess... Well, let's say I saw another thing at the Whirling. Another thing? Great! I love those! So, uh, the phone line is dead? Yes, and the phone company is taking its sweet time sending someone to fix it. Losers. Is it uh, true that there was a uh, foul play? Who told you that? I would never disclose my sources. That that would be dishonorable. Fine, yeah. It looked like someone had messed with the wiring. It was shortly after the hanging, but I don't know if it's at all related. Plenty of assholes around here who aren't murderers. If you do find out who cut the line, though, let me know so I can forward them the repair bill. I didn't see no sign, but... Yeah, God, uh... I saw a sign that said I couldn't go into the kitchen. Uh, why can't I go into the kitchen? What are you, a cook now? That's none of your business. Maybe I am a cook. You're not. You're a menace. Fine, okay. The kitchen is closed until 1pm because the real cook is working. You can snoop around after that, if you must. Mm. Okay. Yes? Uh, Alright, uh, goodbye for now. <laughs> it's still open though, I mean. We can technically bother the cook if we really wanted to. Okay, the drunken man is gone. Mm -hmm. I imagine this just says that the door is closed. Right. Um. Hmm. Indeed, indeed. That was... Uh... Okay, so somebody sabotaged the phone line. Right. After the the hanging, he said. Mm. So the report could have only been made at the harbor. Because, well, at the union office, because, yeah. Anything new with this fence? You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. 
Right, still too low, we need visual calculus. <sighs> if only I knew, dude. <laughs> I would need it so quickly. Um, just going around in circles, aren't we? Hey, Kuno, you're still here. Would you have any other place to be at? Little weird kid. Fuck, does Kuno care? <laughs> um. You know, Kuno, let's talk about the shack again. The fuck do you want with it? Uh, okay, you know what? Never mind. Good call, Pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. Oh, okay. Kuno doesn't okay. fucking care. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> Jeez. Um, is it is it locked? We didn't lock it back, did we? The trash container stands in the spring snow. Nah, we'll, we'll leave it. Okay, so apparently somebody cut the phone lines. That's another detail to keep in mind. Um, who could have done it? Kuno? But why would he? Right? I mean... Maybe you could argue just for the fuck of it, but... I somehow doubt it. Uh... Hmm. Well, since we have nothing... Hmm. I've been kind of thinking about what sort of quote-unquote weasel um, that Everard wants us to... Frighten. I sort of suspect whom, but it's just a suspicion. Um, yeah, the badge. I wonder, where is my badge? You know what, let's go back to the pump. Oh, not the pump. What's that thing called? Um... Let's go back to the canal and see if there's anybody new there we can talk to. See guy is still there. Pick up some tar, maybe. <laughs> Locked away. No, nothing. Yeah, uh, the salami dude is gone. Haven't seen him since. Hmm. Anything we can do with the sign? A crumpled billboard reading Samaran butter. Mm -hmm. Soaks in the canal. Two ugly lines mar the bright countenance of the blonde boy depicted. The sign billboard has fallen on the water lock, keeping it open and thus out of order. Hmm. Maybe we should try this. Yeah, let's see whether we can reconstruct what happened there. Judging by the Ooh. size of the impact, and the parallel lines of burnt rubber. The cause was probably a motor vehicle.
whoops, sorry about that. That was a phone call. Uh, quite an important one as well, so I couldn't just... Um, so, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, alright. Sorry about that, fellas. <laughs> yeah, I... I will have a B-Ride BRB screen, um, which I probably should make by now, but... Okay, so, um, this actually worked. We can somewhat reconstruct this thing. What happened there? Um, yeah, okay, so we have some sort of vehicle, right? Yeah. Don't tell me this is my doing as well. That would be so weird. <laughs> we, somehow we have a bad feeling about this, right? Like, uh, our dude... Ellie has a has a pretty uh, bad feeling about this. Look at the crater. Look at the roof of the shack. Uh, look at the sloping metal roof panel. Look at the broken posts. Look at the sign. Look at the opposite bank. Okay, let's start with the crater. Side slip marks indicated that the vehicle was traveling up the crater at 35 kilometers an hour. There's a, this reminds me of a math problem. Okay, so let's look at the roof of the shack now. The black marks on the roof indicate that the vehicle vaulted from the crater to the roof of the shack. Mm. Mm. And the sloping uh, met metal roof panel? The panel served as a takeoff rim. Mm -hmm. And the broken posts? The vehicle soared through the air hitting the billboard and upsetting the posts. Then it continued its flight, taking the billboard with it. And the sign? The sign broke the vehicle's fall into the canal. Mm -hmm. And the opposite bank. Still speeding, the vehicle made a loop and vanished into the fog along the coast. How should we know <laughs> what model it was, but okay. What was the model of this phantom vehicle? There are two good candidates. The Caprice 40 and the Linear G22. Why the Caprice uh, 40? It's about the right size. And the tire marks look like they came from the skinny tires frequently found on that motor carriage. And the Linear G22? Very sturdy but light motor carriage. More likely than most to survive that jump. Mm -hmm. So, what now? You'd have to follow the tracks to be sure. Yeah, but the thing is, we can't even get to that side yet, so... We will have to wait. The lieutenant looks on, waiting for you to wrap up your analysis. That went smoothly. Any theories about what happened here? Yeah, re reckless uh, traffic uh, hooliganism. What kind of car do you think it was? Hmm. Well, uh, considering that it survived the jump, like, uh, I think. But then again, it also had the sign, and... Uh, you know, to be honest, I think... Uh, um, well, the Linnea is sturdy, yes. Uh, the Caprice is fast, so... Uh, and has thin tires, uh... I think it was a Cupri's uh, 40. That's quite likely, from what I can tell. Yeah, I have uh, no idea who it could have been. What do you think? We are not traffic cops. Should we get back to the murder? I mean, this is definitely, you know... <laughs> inappropriate uh, driving right here, so I think we should uh, bring this driver to justice. <sighs> if we must. If we must. Well, I feel like we should. I'm not expecting him to get far with this. The lieutenant consoles himself. Heck, you never know. Maybe we might. We will actually find the culprit there. Ah, but man, um... 
next? We're not getting experience points for anything. We had a shit ton of skill points. How was I supposed to know that you can't retry that calculus stuff? Right? You know what? Considering that uh, we don't have much else to do at the moment, at least uh, I'm not, you know, f feeling like we're going to be getting anywhere. Uh, considering that we need to wait uh, for Elise to conduct her own little investigation. Um, us, uh, what do we have? I mean, uh, we need to find this person who whom we can ask about the tattoos though, that's true, um, who could that be, I wonder? Uh, somebody who knows about tattoos. Actually, um, I think I saw one tatted up guy uh, who might know a lot about tattoos, but uh, just because he has tattoos doesn't necessarily mean he knows a lot about them, though, does it? Hmm. Sorry, Kim, I'm just thinking out loud here, but um, we have a few options here. We can either go and uh, talk to Plaisance again, and actually I have a strange feeling about that uh, curtain over there. I think uh, she's trying to hide something from us. Uh, as for the, um, the tattoos, uh, heck, they might be... You might have to ask uh, the other dude, but uh, since the tattoos are far more pertinent to the to the case, I think you know, call it just a little hunch for now. But I think I know who we can sort of ask about the meaning. The wait up. Uh, Say, racist man, <laughs> you know anything about tattoos? Looking for something? Ah, yes, yeah, speaking, speaking of which, hey, uh, <laughs> speaking. Uh, I found this mug in, in the trash. Yours? <laughs> oh, man, oh, man, that's great. Look at that guy go. I haven't seen anything that funny in a while. Is it yours? God damn. <laughs> Thanks for that, but no, it's not mine. Uh, right. Uh, I'm going then. Hmm. So it's not his, apparently. Okay. I mean, he's probably not the only racist person in town. Alright, let's talk to... Call Me Manana? Maybe? Wait, I'm looking at the quality of my stream, and for some reason it just looks so strange. Oh wait, it's this bad. Hold on. Wow, it's really this bad, the quality of my stream? Wait, let me, let me actually check um, the bitrate on this. If um we seem to be fine. Oh no, I'm just checking the bitrate just to be sure that uh there's nothing wrong with my connection or anything, but it seems fine. So I don't know if it's just my reference stream acting up, which could be the case. Person? I think that's person, yes. Okay, cool. Uh, hello there, call me manana. Hola, wandering man. How can I help you? <laughs> that's it, that's all you can ask him? Uh, actually, never mind. 
Okay, so... The only dude that I've seen with tattoos, I mean extensive tattoos so far, is this big boy right there. Right, those are tats, right, I assume. I don't think he's gonna be friendly, I mean, but... Hey. Good day to you, sir. Nobody betrays your degeneracy. <laughs> what a way to start, huh? Yeah, Measurehead. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. Well, um, they aren't exactly wrong now, are they? Don't say anything. Size him up first. I'm just here for a friendly chat, Loki. I'm not here to start a fight, but this guy <laughs> doesn't seem to care. Are you admiring my morphophysiology? So, translation. You Myron, bro? It must be frightening to stand in the shadow of this racial pinnacle. Be calm, I'm Sandwich. You are not in danger because you are not a threat to me. Yeah, we'll just disregard the whatever he was on about degeneracy there. No, he's not entirely wrong. Um, concerning our friend uh, Harry here. Okay, my body is unimportant. I'm with the police and I have police business with you. That is precisely the negligence that has led you to succumb to all rule. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Alhul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. Uh, wait, um, Alhul? Yes, Alhul. But, uh, what is Al-Ghul? al, -Ghul? al -Ghul is an ancient Ilmaran poison. A parasitic fungus that has colonized your race. It is a trick the desert pygmies played on you. For humiliating them and stripping them of their land. Wait, you mean... alcohol? Correct. My small skull servant. Servant? Huh? Hmm. You know, I don't have a problem with alcohol. I just drink a uh, little on the weekends. Your mouth moves, but the one who speaks is Al Ghul. You are but a vessel for the ghoul now. Very little of yourself remains. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the Am Sandwich race is waning. Show him the ham still got it. This might lead to a confrontation, actually. Do we want to get here? Do we want to be here? Do we come for this? Do we come over here just for this? No, we did not. But he only respects strength, I believe. Ah, 
final authority. The ego speaks. The ego. Actually, I think the ham sandwich race still has it in them. Willingly calling yourself a ham sandwich, how far the Occidental Ablogroup has fallen. You were once a noble and powerful race. You gave the world eugenics, electricity, and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory, and statecraft. You dominated lesser cultures, like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato-obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? It is, baby, yeah. You know it. Uh, this is indeed going nowhere. I, I actually wanted to ask him about the tats, but suddenly I find myself in this situation. Well, do you know how serious the situation is? Your people have probably killed a man. Enough with this begging. You should leave the stage of history with dignity by inviting the other races to a great world war. Bring your troops to the Seminine Islands and to Boogie Street and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum for you. The walls will be lined with bottles of Al Ghul, your beloved beverage. Inside, we will store the oaths to homosexuality you call art, and your microcephalic skulls. Say, what are those uh, tattoos of yours supposed to mean? Racists are generally not very good examples of their race. Welcome to Revachal. You hear him yell at a redhead woman visiting the Fritter nearby. I am not like them. I am craniometric perfection. I have taken the trouble to permanently draw a phrenologic grid on my skull and features. This should dispel any doubt. Well, let's say we play his game a little bit. You're right, that's uh, craniometric uh, perfection. My race does not stand a chance. Correct. But say, isn't uh, Evra the union boss uh, white? Oh, uh, don't be vulgar. White or not has got little to do with this. The race enigma runs much deeper than that. There must be some friction there. He's keeping it well hidden, however. Yeah, but you still uh, serve him. <laughs> How does that factor into your life? Mr. Clare is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront international capital, which is something your race naivistic communists never did. Also, to serve is noble. It takes discipline. Your petulant individualism has only contributed to your race failure. It is lax and moronic. 
Honestly, my jam is a mysterious uh, force thing. Jam. Individualism. You have gotten these ideas from degenerate youth culture, have you not? You have picked them up from rock and roll songs? I have actually gotten it from disco. Offshoots of the Zemini's people invented disco while having sex under the influence of cocaine. It is a shame upon my race. But what is done is done. I am not surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural victory of the Seminese race. Hmm. Okay, uh, I'll ask, uh, who are the Seminese? The South Island race, Aplogroup A4A. We are the rightful masters of the Insulindian Archipelago. We descend from the Areopagites of ancient Pericarnassus and arrived here 4,000 years ago. Millennia before you. Mm -hmm. We are the future. That is all you need to know. So you were born and raised on the islands before you moved to Ravashaw? I am a descendant. The narrow streets of Ulumbuir are with me in my genetic dreams. I see young Seminese women walk into the grey mass on Ile de Fontaine, waiting on immaculate conception from the pale. So, you did not come from the islands? No. I have heard about it on the radio. So, you're not really Semenese, you're just from Ravasho. I'm from Kuron. And no, it is not just in Ravasho. The city is central to the Simony strategy. Spreading through its trade networks, our culture will dominate the world. You have heard enough about our phylogenetic secrets for today. You have extinction to come to terms with. Think upon it. Say, uh, you know anything about this mug? He does not so much as glance at the object. This your kind of thing? Stop showing me your pathetic cup. I have no interest in it. Yeah, looking at you, I'm thinking, why are you not with the Hardy Boys? I am not the first line of defense. I am the last. In addition, these so-called Hardy Boys are an effeminate clique of bodybuilders. Their company is spiritually degrading. But uh, you're all part of the Union? The hardy manlets are on the pay of the company. I answer to the union alone. And I do this out of race heroism. Finance is an alien concept to the Simonies. Hmm. Now leave me be. I must luxuriate in the company of my woman. Do we subscribe to this advanced race theory? Hmm. Say, uh, Kim, what do you think uh, about this? I think this racist is better than the last. But the next racist will be the really good one. How do you know there will be a uh, next racist? There always is. 
This is reality. Let's uh, try to conceptualize. Ask what kind of races there are first. Classification is core to this stuff. Hmm. Measurehead. Uh, to be honest, I don't even know how I know your name, but somehow I do. I am new to this world. Uh, help me understand its races. I need uh, to know what kind of different races are there. Do you? What thing? We already got in the harbor. You just want to hear about races, don't you? You are obviously a liberal, Sailite. A polyculturalist. I can see it from your love of microtechnology and your sartorial choices. Do not deny your friend the truth you have denied yourself. There are three categories of race. Tip A. The heroic races, Tibet, the servile races, and the vile CF race cauldron of pederasty. Which one do you need education on? Hmm. Let's uh, start with uh, uh, Tip uh, Ah. Those are the Simonese, the Areopagite and the Occidentals, excluding the Maun, of course. The Maun are riddled with eczema to the point where they find it impossible to smile. They are all lactose intolerant, a common result of in-breathing. A receding genetic pool has led the Maun on reprehensible street parades. In mound cities like Stats Canal and Vre de Fort, wearing wooden clogs on their feet and little green tassels on their hats. Okay, got it. Uh, but who are Deep Aven in your view? The Vespertines and Messinians of Vesper and Messina? The ancient Meteorans of Meteo by the Golden Pisantic Sea? The Suren of Sur La Clé, and even the North Königsteiners, all have Tip A race propensities. The other large Mondial Civilisation, the Mesk, are too yellow and oleaginous to count as a heroic race. True, they are violent and expansionist, but they have a glandular problem. Overproduction of sebum. Sebum is leaking into their brains, making them listen to El Mariachi music and eat toxic minced meat based food, which in turn only produces more sebum. And uh, who are the Semenese and uh, Ario Bajites in this? As proven by the Maun and the Mesk. Occidental Tip A is in retrograde. The Semenese and the Areopagite are on the ascent. This is wisdom. <laughs> um. Okay, what's the difference between the Semenese and the uh, Areopagites? The Areopagites are sleek, long headed. The Semenese are powerful. Mesomorphic. The former is an immutable progenitor, unchanged since the super isola of Pericarnassus. Ancient brains rest in their slender skulls. The latter is perfected and adapting. Together they form the Simeno Areopagite, or Simeopagite Super Race. That is all. There are no more Tip A races in the world. Nature was not capable of more. 
Mm. And this uh, deep uh, bay? Deep bay are the unheroic races, amorphous non-competitors of the great race. The Koikos and the Vacholier, they are mud-colored people. Mud-colored? To an untrained eye, the Koiko appear white and pinkish, like a ham sandwich. But look into their eyes and you will see. They are of an indistinct muddy color, and so is their skin. Unhealthy, sweaty, and ashen. Pinkness is a racial quality that has to be earned through centuries of advanced ballistic warfare and cultural domination that the Grad people have undergone for drinking al rul and smoking the degenerate tobacco and for eating potato. The Koiko, the countless micronationalities of Grad, are all inexplicably obsessed with potat. The only thing they like more is dividing into microscopic ethnostates, like political amoeba. Hmm. And the uh, Vashlo Vasholias uh, you mentioned? The Vasholians, halfway between Tip A and Racial called Ron, two makes to no right from wrong. You tried your degenerate little revolution which was the single greatest failure committed by humans in our 82,000 year history on this planet. Is it 82,000 years that we've been recording history? You have very little idea of what is happening, but that seems a little off. I'm pretty sure history lasted, uh, hasn't lasted that long. The mysteries of the people of this planet are a tragedy that has played out countless times over, like a fever dream of skin, hair, and bone. Wake up, naive Chespius. That uh, revolution sounds like it was perpetrated by degenerate marauders, not uh, all the people of Ravashol. The revolution came to Ravashol from Grad, in Zaraz ridden potato carts. It is literally an illness, a prion disease that leaves the parietal and frontal lobe ridden with holes. A soft, sponge-like mass of dementia Hallucination and paranoia. The revolution is fatal familial insomnia. A hereditary prion condition passed from the Koiko to the Occidentals. But not sexually. Probably through trade roots and potato acid, the prime component of the potato plant. Enough of Tibet mediocrity. Okay, and uh, the, the so-called uh, rest from Z to F races, what do you have to say? Tips the F are a museum of failed chimeric experiments and tragic maladaptations. They are tortured creatures waiting to be put to sleep. Your morbid interest in them worries me. Chimeric experiments? Lesser races like the Mesquito, a grotesque mixture of a mask woman and a Semenese man. Only possible if the mother is mask and the father Semenese. The other way around, they fail to produce offspring. The Mesquito is born sterile, like a donkey. All they have left is to ride customized motor carriages with hydraulic suspension, listening to aggressive El Mariachi music to vent their impotent despair. Okay. 
enough of C.F. Yes, it is cruel to entertain ourselves with the deformities of the Earth. Were there any able-bodied races you need a dedication on? Now that we've been through all the types, uh, do you... I understand the advanced race theory? You understand nothing. To solve the great race enigma, you have to first ask yourself, what is the race enigma? You have not even worded the mystery, let alone solved it. How do I uh, word uh, the mystery? You need to internalize what you have heard here today, then return to me. This clarity does not come instantly. Okay, let's discuss something else. I cannot possibly imagine what else we have to discuss, Tibere Vasholian. Your love for disco music and venereal disease? It's clear you like the hard stuff, Bruta. What is my <laughs> lower intestine going on about? Lower intestine? The term is metabolic and circulatory system. Okay, but what's the hard stuff? Fascism, Bruta. Okay, stomach. I've made up my mind about this thing. You're going to keep your vus, right? Keep your vus, Brota. Absolutely not. I'm not uh, going to be played by an upset stomach. There's a slow, painful growl somewhere in your intestines, knocking on your alcohol-engorged liver. It is one of betrayal and disappointment. Almost wet. Listen, I'm just trying to get a better understanding of the tats. Yeah, listen, Kim, uh, I'm just trying to find out more about these, uh, the meaning of those tattoos on the. The guy they lynched is all. Ah, but it's, that's certainly. Oh man, that's. Uh, <laughs> that that drill certainly did not, uh, you know, bring us closer to any conclusion, now did it? Hmm. Uh, don't tell me we have to speak to Everard again. Maybe we have to go back to Everard? But I would really like to avoid that. So yeah, uh, what do we do? Um, again, we appear to be sort of stuck. <laughs> we need we need to level up, and to do that, we need to complete tasks. And what can we complete immediately? There isn't much. You know, I have a suspicion about whom that soldier, that mercenary, actually assaulted at that time. I think it was Sylvie. Okay, that's my mm, suspicion. That it was Sylvie. The thing is, we could call her again. But the thing is, judging... <laughs> By our last conversation with her, she is less than inclined to speak with us. Um, but I knew there was more to that story, right? Like, I mean, I don't know. I might be completely mistaken. But if that's indeed what happened, and what I think happened, that's why she quit work. 
That's why she sounds so traumatized. It's not because of our behavior, necessarily. I mean, that played into it. That did not help at all. But I'm just saying. Um, I think there was there's more to that story than she lets on. At least that's my... Um, again, my... Um, thoughts on that. But yeah, um, apparently we have uh, this to think about. What? <laughs> My day <they> upset. <laughs> okay, so what does it say? A mass of fantastic races swells in your head. Desert pygmies playing with their own excrement, coikos juggling potatoes, eczema ridden mounds grinning and dancing and wooden clogs. Everyone is there, the whole race gang, plus some that you may have come up with yourself. The thieving sub the and the seal light cast of fortunes hatching some kind of scheme. In the eye of this race, and Perion, a vertigo reaching up to the heavens. You sense something drawing nearer, nearer. The heck is this? <laughs> I know, I know you, you um, fed us a whole bunch of drivel about that. Uh, doesn't mean we want to spend time on it, do we? Can't unlock something. Oh, we, we need to spend a skill point, probably. Yeah. Minus one to drama. But navigating through this web of the mastery, you know, um, maybe we need to understand this better. You know, that's my look on it. Although, what's that to understand? Um, <laughs> but anyway, anyway, we'll we'll think about that later. Right now, I don't know what to do. I mean, uh, did I call the stream? Uh, should we keep looking for? Wait, red-haired lady. Oh no, wait. Oh, no, it's no. Said somebody was entering the fleet. Heck, let's go to the fleet. Although, there's no reason to be there. But, hey. Let's check it out just in case. I mean, that brought. something to our attention, right? Him calling out something to somebody? A red-haired woman? It might be nothing, though. Yeah, she's long gone, I guess. I don't know why I thought that would just should <laughs> be important somehow. Yeah! What a waste. <laughs> anyway, I think this is a good place to call it a stream. Uh, not much happened here, again, um, but, <clears throat> I mean, we did talk to Titus, finally, the, the people from the Union who claim to have done it, um, to have, uh, hanged that corpse there. Uh, well, apparently take full responsibility as a group for the murder, which is very strange in and of itself, but, um, yeah, they do that. But there's more than meets the eye, that's for certain. So yeah, um, I think we'll leave this mystery for another day. As always, I would, like th I would like to thank everybody for tuning in. Big thanks for that. And yeah, um, hope you have a good one. Take care.